Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is episode 92. Today's guest is a veteran actor of stage and screen. You know him from Richard Linklater's Fast Food Nation, uh, Temple Grandin, and Friday Night Lights. And of course, he played Ray Thomas in the classic season two episode of Seinfeld, The Statue. Please welcome Michael Conway. Michael, thanks for joining uh, thank you guys for having me. Greetings. Right. I should say I, I just watched it, so <laughs> so I didn't feel stupid. You guys kind of scare me how much how much information you guys know about this. So I had to watch the episode, and I'm kind of in a flop sweat right now. It was kind of like, whew, everything's coming back. So uh, greetings and salutations, yeah. <laughs> as, as Ray would say. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well played, Michael. So, yeah. So take us. So take us back. Uh, April of '91, 30 years ago, this episode oh. aired. Yes. Um, obviously, you were early in your acting career. Um, Seinfeld kind of was just getting started. So tell us a little bit of how, how the part, part came about, the audition process. Yeah, so it was weird. I, you know, I, first off, I, you guys know I'm not really an actor. I'm really I'm, I'm an art guy. I, I went I went to school for art. So uh, so I just kind of did this I, as for fun, and I was. Uh, and I was, had done a showcase with uh, my friend Erica Lyon, who was very good friends with Mark Hirschfeld, who you had on the show. Okay. And she, I think she threatened him with an interpreter life of his life if he didn't come to see our showcase. So I, he, and then I got this out of that. Oh. Um, and so this was, and it was shot in January, as I remember. Um, and uh, I just got a call and just went in and uh, had no idea. This is the first big network show I'd ever been in on. And um and, and and got it. It was just weird. And uh, but I didn't know the show. I had never seen it. I knew who Jerry Seinfeld was. In fact, uh, when I got it, I had to go to my boss, uh, Fred Zaks. I was like going, Fred, I I I just got a job on a sitcom. Um, I, I'm going to be gone for a week, you know, with no notice at all. And I said, <laughs> uh, it's it's by that guy, uh, Jerry Seinfeld. He's on Carson. You know, had right. never seen it. Um, uh, just, you know, I'd done, done the, uh, you know, the, the audition and then just had to walk in and see who was in the cast on day, you know, on the table read. I was like, whoa, <laughs> it was great. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, cr it's crazy too. Word, word is you, you beat out some pretty big names too, for that role that were yeah, actors. Hank Shalhoub, Azaria. Yeah. Tony yeah. Shalhoub and Hank Azaria. Yeah. Too yeah, bad yeah. nothing ever came of them. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> Whenever the people bring up that, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, and you got me, sorry. Yeah, but they, they did okay. So I, you know. <laughs> well, you nailed the role. I mean, we. Oh. I guess there was a note there that I read that I, because we're trying to get, and, and you kind of touched on this when we were talking earlier in email, but like the outlandishness of the character and the pretentiousness of him and everything. I mean, uh, you know, how many, how much notes did Larry Charles give you on that? Like, where did you draw from? As not even really an actor, you said, like, where did you draw from to even come up with those, the way he talked and just, uh, you know, that over the topness. Well, yeah, I mean, they 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 said it was in the, it was in the notes. I mean, they said this guy's like acting like he's in a Shakespearean play all the time, and I and I kept trying to ground him in something real. I mean, I did have I did have you know some acting training, so right. I mean, it was so it wasn't like I just this is my first day at the races, but uh, you know it was it was uh, you know I, I tried to ground him in something real, and every time I tried to make him real, they would go no 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 no, and it was Larry Charles who was doing most of the thing. I mean, Larry uh, Larry David was kind of he was kind of a phantom. He was kind of around a lot, but Larry Charles, this was like I believe you guys would know this. Might have been his first uh, episode. It's the first episode. Yeah, of the it was. Uh, yes. It was the first one that aired. The other one, the bet they they had a. It was about a gun. Okay, it got uh, wrapped. Yep. Okay, so you so you know I'm, so there's something about that because I think that was filming the week that filmed the week before and there's a really good long story about that. But they had told me that the, Landis Williams, who was the the costumer, told me that the guy the week before got fired, and I went, they fire people. <laughs> and she goes, she goes, and she's like, she's like, yeah, I fired him to cut it. You know, like I'm going, are they going to fire me? Because I just thought, you know, I mean, I mean, most of us think we're, I mean, we're all like fear for being caught as a fraud and everything. And I'm like, I was the one who didn't belong in the room. And, and I just thought I'm going to get fired for sure. And, um, and uh, during rehearsal, during, during, during blocking one day, uh, they, these guys were just genius. And I mean, let me, I'll, I'll get to that story later, but you guys go ahead and ask questions because, because it, it, it's a good story. Cause I, I literally, uh, I had a horrible day on set and I thought they were going to fire me. Uh, no. and just because let's of hear that it now, let's, let's hear it now. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So, you know, you do the table read and everything and, and everybody's and, and, and I remember, you know, I, I got there the first day and, and I was like going, Oh, I know him from Fridays. I knew Michael Richards from Fridays. He and I had a mutual friend. So I was like going, Hey, David Peters, you know, David Peters he was going, Oh, cool. You know, David Peters. He's like, cause I, I'm an art guy. So it, he's, he, he did the titles for Fridays and, 
And uh, Julia knew Isabella Hoffman, who's an actress friend of mine. And, uh, Jason knew uh, Danny Paul, who's a, a friend of mine from in New York. And I didn't know anybody that knew Jerry, but I had friends who knew friends. And, uh, and so I, I was really comfortable with them all really quickly, uh, uh, but they were all really different. Um, and none of them, this set was, and this is really unusual because uh, I think you guys have talked to another friend of mine um, who she had done, um, she had done Night Court. And Richard Mall had like came up to her and he goes, you know what? All you guest stars, this is your, this, you think this is your big break, but get your lines over with and don't step on mine. Oh, geez. This Mull? was not like that. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, you know, because, and that was later in the series and people were mean and they hated each other. And, you know, there's all that sort of weird. Right, stuff. Right. This was not like that at all. These guys were totally like they wanted, they wanted the guest stars to do well. They wanted, they wanted everybody, you know, to do great. This was a weird episode. Uh, I think there was some pressure. And again, you guys may know this and, and believe me, everything that I say is from a really outsider's perspective because right. I didn't know what was really going on. There was a lot of stress because, because of the season time on this, they were trying to figure out if the show was going to go. Right. And I remember Howard West said, Ugh. I don't know. I don't know. You know, we got to, we got to compete against sisters. It's a TV show that was on at the time. It's like, you know, like the juggernaut sisters. Uh, and uh, you know, it was, he, it was, it, they really didn't know the show about nothing was, they wanted a show about something. And so there was a lot of pressure from Brandon Tartikoff and, and uh, to do a show about something. I remember that, that um, Rob Reiner was on the set a lot, kind of, everybody was kind of watching and, and a lot of people were really having their eyes on this show because they really wanted this to do well. And, and uh, I don't know if that was, you guys probably know, you know, when did the, when did the Seinfeld villain start? Yeah. I mean, uh, listen, see, I mean, it took off in three, but we talked with, you know, uh, Matt Goldman, who's one of the original writers. Right. Uh, I remember. You needed this year to like form characters and especially this episode. Yeah. This uh, episode was Kramer. Kramer sure. specifically yeah. becomes Kramer. Right. right. And that happens on a few other episodes with Elaine and George in season two. So really a crucial season and you talked about the unselfishness and you were one of those kind of bright stars if you will of season two yeah. um yeah. where no let's see where you kind of you outshine the main cast in a lot of ways you're uh, you're, you're quite memorable so i'm just i'm so curious weird. well and I, I got a good story about that so you know so again this is gonna be that that thing i i we were doing blocking and jerry we're doing that I, there's a middle scene in that it's really hard that one where you know i come in and i go sugar you know uh you know do the whole sort of like the, yeah yeah the pastry thing the best, the best and, thing is when you go to sit down and then she calls you back into the kitchen and you gotta go yeah to the i was like yeah, yeah. And everything and so you know it's just supposed you're supposed to get the cracks in, in who he is and he's not very he's not very nice and, and um and so uh and then so julia just kept going and we were doing it and she was like going oh, i don't think it's so funny and I was like, so then my confidence started. I started, I started right. sweating. Right. And, uh, and then Jerry looked at me at the end and he goes, and, you know, at the end, uh, when he, and he, he says, I, I don't, I don't do lunch or I don't do whatever. I don't do dinner, dinner for suckers or something yeah, like that. For suckers. And, then, Great yeah. and then he looks at me and he goes like this. And he just goes. And he looks over at one of the Larry's and goes. And I thought, oh, I'm fired. I'm fired. <laughs> I just got fired. Who did I tell? I'm just like, <laughs> who did I tell? Who did I tell? This is gonna be the most embarrassing moment. And that's of my life. what, like, is that literally first day of of, of shooting? It's, no, it's first day of blocking. So those guys and those guys were shockingly they prepared. I mean, they just came up and they just they they just did all their, you know. I was used to theater where you you know you told, you get told where to go, where to stand, do this, do that. These guys figured it out. So I started kind of like freaking out a little bit. And Richards goes, "Hey, come on, we're going to lunch." And Richard just takes me to lunch and he sits there and he, he, and he talked about himself. And it was really, really interesting because he, how, who he thought he was. And you got to, this guy is an artist in a weird way. And in the yeah. same way that, you know, I mean, I've gone to school with some pretty, you know, have heavy artists and stuff and everything. This guy is that, he's a performance artist. I mean, I grew up with Bill Hicks. Right. Um, and, you know, I mean, these guys are one in a million and, and, and watching him work and how serious he was about how comedy was constructed. And he sat there and he goes, you think this show's funny? And I went, yeah. And he goes, do you think it works? And I go, I'm the new guy. Yeah, I think it, I think it's great. And he just he said, I just he goes, the comedy styles are really different. Jerry's really you know heady and and uh, Jason's really physical and uh, and 
you know, he goes, he goes, and I'm, you know, he goes, I, I'm a, uh, he goes, he goes, but you do physical comedy. And I go, yeah, yeah, I can do physical comedy. He goes, so let's talk about that last scene. And I go, and I looked at him and I go, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have full permission to throw me around like a, like a rag doll. And I said, do whatever you need to do. I will never, I mean, just like, you know, I said, make something crazy happen. And he goes, and uh and we were off to the races and i mean and it, and so he was like a dance partner on that thing because we really and we we worked it out they wouldn't rehearse it very much because we he and i you know you know and he and if you look right over my head it breaks the wall he throws me so hard <laughs> up against that wall and i'm six foot two i'm not a little guy and he's giant and he just threw me like a rag doll up against that wall and you can see the wall break right next to my head uh it, it was it was pretty spectacular. It was, it was a great he was a great dance partner. Yeah, I mean that that was like we said that's Kramer's arrival for me. I mean watching the show live, like you know live as in when it aired, and um, you know being a fan from the beginning. That episode was when Kramer became Kramer. That scene is when Kramer became Kramer, and that's amazing to hear about how you know you know you helped him through it as a partner. It's uh, you know it's iconic. It's it really is. Um, you know, you touched on knowing Bill Hicks and growing up with Bill Hicks. I have, I'd yeah. be remiss if I didn't ask. I mean, what, uh, you know, just to kind of tie into the Seinfeld a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, two comedic geniuses, but in different ways for sure. I mean, uh, maybe you could kind of just touch on what, what you saw. Um, is there any similarities or if not, like wh where do you see, you know, Bill's. Well, Bill, when I, I mean, I played baseball with Bill and Bill was a really good athlete. So baseball, you know, we played baseball and we were, and we would sit in the thing and we would do, we, we'd sit in the dugout and juggle and try to make each other laugh. Uh, you know, but, uh, it, it was, uh, he was not particularly funny. You know, uh, he was, he was brilliant. And, right. um, the last time I saw Bill, I went to see him at the comedy store in Houston and, um, and he was throwing down kamikazes and, and, you know, and saying just outrageous things. And, and I said, you know, uh, dude, every time you talk, I think you're going to hell. The floor is going to open up, but we're all going to slide in for laugh, slide into the same hole for laughing at you. And he just goes, oh, good, good. That's good. <laughs> so, but yeah, he was great. He was great. But he was, you know, deep and dense. And, uh, you know, speaking of uh, Richard Linkletter, uh, did uh, Fast Food Nation, but they, I think it, I, I heard at one point that he was going to do Bill Hicks' life story, and I was so excited about that. Oh, great, yeah. The That'd right person to do it. I hope yeah, he does. Yeah, for sure. It. So we'd also be remiss if we didn't mention um, your love interest of the show, the great Rava. Oh, <laughs> I mean, was, so tell us was, a little bit about Rava. She a, was a quite a unique character for sure. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot in there. So, uh, and it's not my story. So there, uh, they alluded, Jerry alluded to it on a, on a DVD. Uh, someday somebody will have to tell that story about who she, she knew them. Through Richard Lewis. Okay. You did it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. That, that's, 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 that's well knowledge though, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. that's not an Yeah, idea. it was. And I didn't know that. So, you know, we went to lunch and she said, she goes, I said, you know, you're really comfortable around them. And she goes, oh, I know these guys. I know and everything. And she was not, she, and there was this, this weird tension with them and they would, they would kind of, they played hardball. I mean, they, they would, and I didn't get it because I was just trying to be a nice guest in the house and you <laughs> right. know, get along with everybody. And she would just sit there and go, he'd say, Hey, Nareet. And she'd go, Hey, Jerry. And it was like, oh, he's the boss. I would, calm the hell down uh you know uh uh but yeah there there was there was past history uh and so and um yeah and there was uh she was she, she was so nice to me she was great she had this beautiful she was really interesting that voice of hers you know she actually did have a really interesting voice she's i think she's um israeli yeah she because she actually had served in the israeli army um and so she was a tough nut uh and beautiful and so kind to me um and yeah and she's i i, I i've lost she was on facebook for a while she she got off facebook so i have i've lost touch with her but she was a really lovely woman and some yeah. of those lines man oh yeah the coincidences line is, is great yeah. <laughs> no big coincidence yeah. walk with I me mean, so many lines in this episode. it's one of my favorite episodes i mean i i lived in the yeah. top 25 of all time it's just one of those that always kind of stuck with me um wow. the uh 
you know, we touched on, obviously you just talked about the, the ending scene, which is amazing. Um, and the scene when you're kind of Jerry finds a statue, which is great too, you know, dip the bud, dip the bread in the batter. I love that scene with the French toast. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, the one we didn't talk about yet, I guess, is the one too with George, when he kind of confronts you and you're like, you're sorry to make me angry. Like, that's a great yeah. scene. Uh, that one of my favorite so George fun. scenes. I mean, maybe take us through that a little bit. Yeah. So that was actually my favorite. And see, that was where I got to actually act because that one yeah. was because, uh, you know, my thing was, you know, I kept trying to base him in something. And so, um, I knew, I knew a couple people who were, um, you know, a lot like Ray, you know, you know the smile, you know, and everything. I, I knew this one guy who, who never remembered me when he introduced me. He goes, hi, uh, my name's, and he would introduce himself and he'd go like, and I go, yeah, we've met before. But he always came to me with this big sort of like, you know, you know, smile and, and he never remembered me. So I, uh, and then, uh, but my brother was a liar and he was uh, when he was younger and he was always his best. He was really good when he, um, when he was lying, he just got really normal. And, and so that was my thing with Ray is that, you know, I, I would, I would be like all this performing, you know, this performing guy that was doing this all the time. And then the minute he started going, I don't understand. I don't, uh, you know, what are you talking about? It was, and it was also very Abbott and Costello. We talked about Abbott and Costello timing, you know, with the George and the thing, and I wasn't supposed to hear George. And, and so we had to keep it going. What, you know, uh, we had to keep the timing going really fast. And so, uh, and Jerry, oh, here's a good story. Jerry looked at me when we sat down and he goes, um, I'm not a good actor. And he goes, you guys are going to have to help me. And I mm. thought that was, I was very disarming. And I was like, going, no, you're, you're doing fine. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it, he, he, and so we, we worked out the timing and, you know, and sometimes I had to look away and uh, there's some stuff that's actually cut out of that, that scene. Some, a waitress came up and took our order and then brought me some pastries, but all of a sudden you just see that I've got a plate full of food and I'm eating it and, you know, and, and drinking and stuff like that. But, so there was a lot more choreography that we had to kind of work through. Uh, Ray, and, Ray, Ray and his pastries, huh? <laughs> exactly. Well, that was the thing, Ray and his pastries. And I think there's even, um, oh, here's something that's interesting because I, I, I wanted to do my homework. Here's my script. Oh, wow. Um, so do you have the statue real- too? I wanted to ask you, do you have the statue? Did they let you take the statue or no? They didn't let me, but, um, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Had I known, I've been looking all over that dude. I, no one sells that. It's like a replica on eBay or no, nothing. No, no. I'm looking no, no, all no. over it. This is a guy named Andrew Knight. Andrew Knight did this out of, uh, you know, he made this as a project of his own and I found it online and I went and he, and he was selling it. And I said, uh, I want to buy it. Yes. And, uh, wow. So, plug. I know it, it's awesome. And so fantastic. I, I love this thing so much. Uh, <laughs> but for, those listening, were, for those listening, Michael just pulled out the statue. Yes, that, exactly. That Ray, that, that's exact statue. <laughs> so we, there, well, we think he stole. I don't think that was ever solved. That, right. We, 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 yeah. Deny, deny. It could have been bought at Ch- where was it? Chinatown. It's a guy yeah. Chinatown. Singapore. Yeah. By some Singapore guys in Singapore. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Michael, yeah, the, you know, clearly the chemistry and you had with all these people on set was amazing. I'm just, I kind of want to go back to the audition again. Like, sure. Um, because it sounds like when you get on set, you know, Larry Charles, Larry David, I'm, I'm assuming Tom Sharonis, all these guys are kind of yeah. changing things in real time. Like, yeah. So what, what was the audition? Was it a specific scene? And like, who did you read with? I'm just curious back then. Uh, I read Mark. I have it. I have it right it's here. It's, first, oh, okay. it's, wow. the, it's Hirschfeld. And, I saw him, and so I've got it. It was um, it was my entrance, our uh, greetings and salutations, <laughs> and then um, Reyes late as usual, you know, and then you know, yeah. uh, unexpected surprise and delight. You know, uh, looks like yeah, I've got it all here. Part uh, of your mo being late that was uh, exactly right. Crazy. And there's a few lines changed in here, but not very much. A lot of stuff was changed. I mean, Elaine was actually in the original uh, interrogation scene, which was at the at the uh she was actually originally in that scene at monks was it shot and or just rewritten like it was rewritten sh- oh, okay and, and she said she wore a big she wore a big floppy hat and she said she looked like a cow sill <laughs> was, i feel like a cow sill but she was trying to hide under her hat and um i think she yeah she didn't want to be in that scene so she got out uh, were there scenes that were shot that didn't air that you remember or no everything was pretty much uh no they were tight yeah. No, they were they were really tight. 
uh, yeah, I mean, I remember scenes had to be rewritten and, and I kept getting blue pages and pink pages and salmon pages and it was like, and just like, you know, sitting in my trailer, just trying to remember everything. So I didn't screw everything up. Yeah. <clears throat> now, Seinfeld wasn't Seinfeld at that point, no, right? right? But right. still no. 23 million people watched it that night. I mean, it was a huge, right. a huge audience. I'm just curious, so, like. Shocking because, because, you know, that wasn't the original air date. Uh, the original air date was preempted by a war that was going on. Uh, the original air date, if you look at if you look at the schedule, there's about a month and a half where nothing was being aired, and it was mm. it was the Kuwait Kuwait war, I think, was right around there, or something happened. But I remember uh, some big battle was going on, and everything. You know, I'd sent out all these sort of like things to watch me on Seinfeld, and uh, and and had to send it out three times because they kept trying to reschedule it. So. Yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot had, of heat. Well, back then you had to send it through snail mail, I imagine. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah, I'm curious. So after this, I know you were, you're an artist per se, yeah. um, but you know, big show, 23 million people. Did you get the bug? Were like, was acting something you wanted to like lean more into? Cause I mean, Ray was just such a, I mean, incredible character. Like I thought that could have, uh, no, I did. For about a year, I was kind of in that. I was in that cycle of, uh, you know, of guys that are going in for things. And, and uh, you know, I had a, I had a really great acting teacher named Michael Sherloff who, who discovered Barbara Streisand and Gene Hackman and Dustin Hoffman and everything like that. And he would say this thing where he's like, going, "If you can do anything else in the world, do it, because this, <laughs> this business will chew you up and spit you out." And he said, "If you can do something else," he said, "The amount of time and effort it takes to be an actor," he goes, "If you put this into any other." Th- effort in the world it will succeed and um and you know and i had i had other things to do so i i, I kind of did it for about a year and a half i actually got represented by Sh- uh, shapiro west um george shapiro and howard west and uh diane burnett they they represented me for about a year trying to figure out whether you know i had legs to 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 do some shows and 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 you know did respectable you know kind of got far on it but you know it just wasn't my thing i you know it's, it's a lot of i like to have more control <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. I'd rather be a writer. Yeah. So I was just going to say, so speaking of that, like, you know, this we mentioned is Larry Charles's first, uh, you know, first script. The mm-hmm. show had not taken off yet. We're talking about that as well. It seems like you can sense that on the set uh, walking in. You kind of see the, you know, is this thing going to go? We're going to keep, you know, stay on the air. Um, you know, how much how much was your interaction? Let's say you got Tom Sharon as the director, you got Larry David, the showrunner, and you got Larry Charles, the writer. Um, of those three, like where was most of them focused, like as far as your part goes, like when you were kind of on set, did you notice the most kind of interactions with? Um, probably Larry Charles. Larry Charles was probably the most connected. Um, at one point, I think, uh, again, Landis Williams, who was doing costumes at that time, she, you know, I went back, I got one note from uh, Tom Sharonis and one note from uh, from Larry Charles. And I went back and I go, who do I listen to? And she said, it's TV. You listen to the writer. Oh, interesting. She said, when you're in a movie, it's always the director. She goes, when you're in TV, it's the writer. So and that's usually the Larry David is usually kind of, you know, writer B, even right. if he didn't write the script. Right. So that's what we've heard from a lot of the actors that, you know, Larry right. David's pretty much running the show. But Absolutely. it sounds like, um, you know, and Larry Charles was was basically a second showrunner in some ways, I would guess, by the time the show kind of yeah. took off. But. Um, and, and Jerry was writing too. I mean, that was the thing. And, you know, and, and what I learned later when Jerry did that, you know, like I looked away, he was talking about the writing. He was looking at Charles and he was like sitting there going like, we got to fix this scene. You know, he wasn't looking about me. I, you know, I was thinking I was making it all about me. He was, he was, th- he was rewriting it, you know, in his head. So, you know, Larry, uh, Jerry was writing too. And they all were like, they would go in there and they would write at night and we'd get new pages. It was exhausting. I don't know how I did it. He was amazing. Yeah. But yeah. you know, and you were one of the few characters to literally have scenes with the big, you know, all three of them essentially, right? Kramer, yeah, uh, Jason, Julia, and Jerry. And Jerry. So, yeah. Very I rare so that, that happens. No, I mean, seriously, in the later years, they kind of, everyone kind of had a different storyline. And you know, like this was kind of, it was one like kind of cohesive group. So it was, it was pretty unique. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I can't even. I can't even imagine. I mean, you know, I, how lucky I was to get this role at this time when that cast was at that place. Uh, you know, it was just, you know, I, I, I you know, the 
fact, I, I said I didn't want to be an actor, but I, you know, when I was a kid, it's weird. I, I didn't, I didn't want to be on like Dick Van Dyke. I didn't want to be on Leave It to Beaver. I didn't want to be on Mission Impossible. I wanted to be on I Love Lucy. You know, but I, but I, how can you be on that show if, if any of those people weren't on there? So I didn't want to replace anybody. What I wanted to be is I wanted to be Frank Nelson, who was a fantastic uh, character actor. He was the guy who would sit there. He was like, he was like on Jack Benny's show, and he'd be like, "Well, Mrs. Ricardo." <laughs> You know, that guy. I wanted to be that guy because I thought he was he'd walk in, steal the scene and then, you know, and then walk out the door. And, you know, it, what's weird is that I ended up kind of doing that in, like, in a weird way. I was in my my generation's I Love Lucy. And I can't even believe how lucky I was to just for that to be, you know, the thing that I got to do. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, and 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 you did that. I mean, it's exactly what you did. You came in, you 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 know, you kind of st- stole the stole the episode as as a guest star. Um, it sounds like you hadn't seen the show. Obviously, it was only the second season. So right. before you got on, were you then? It sounds like you are kind of you know. Uh, it seems like you got a, a deep uh, you know fandom of of TV shows. So you became a fan of the show afterwards. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, Seinfeld. Yeah. Yeah, as absolutely. As, yeah, and, yeah. I mean. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's just brilliant. I mean, stuff was just brilliant. It's great. Just stuff was amazing. And, you know, I was just, uh, you know, I was, I could, I just can't, I still can't believe that that show that I had to explain to my boss who it was because nobody knew what the show was ended up being what it was. Just, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and, and on the set with those, you know, that crew, we've kind of talked to a few other guest stars and you mentioned it with, with, with Michael Richards. Um, you know, taking you out to lunch and kind of going through yeah. that uh, that scene. Um, anything else from the set, like off, you know, off off stage that that came up as far as you know, banter backstage or or the out to lunch things like that. Maybe the rap party. I don't know if you were you were part of that. I did, but we I did like go to a rap party. Stores. Yeah, I did go to the rap second party season on that. one. Yeah. Nice. yeah, the second season one. It was great. It was at the comedy store. Uh, oh yeah, really? It was, it, yeah. I the think second season rap party is the comedy store. Not comedy store. No improv. And the yeah, I was going to say because Jerry does improv. not like the comedy store. Yeah, from yeah, no, no, what no, no, I no. gathered from yeah, interviews. No. Okay, it was the improv. It was the improv. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, the old Sierra's building. Yeah, yeah. No, I. You know, I. I tell you, I tell you one really cool story that I got from Michael Richards. Michael Richards told me about, you know, and 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 Jerry also told me because when Jerry realized that this was my first kind of thing, he goes, this is kind of a big deal for you. And I went, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he goes, he, and then he started talking about his time when he did on Benson and he was going, God, I just didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, and, and just him being that, you know, you know, honest and sort of cool, you know, and, and kind of like saying, yeah, I know it's, it's freaking scary. It's weird. You don't, you know, you don't know what you're doing. And, uh, and, and you feel like you, you, you know, cause I told him, I said, I thought you were going to fire me. So <laughs> oh, we were trying to write the script. I went, okay. Um, but, uh, I tell you the most interesting thing on that same lunch with, with, uh, Richards was, and, um, and I hope he doesn't mind me telling the story, but I think he's fascinating. And, uh, and the, and I'm not, and because I, because I did grow up with Bill Hicks, I did, I did, was not surprised that the thing that happened did happen mm. because the, you know, and, uh, the TMZ sort of like did and, and, right. and covered and because he told me this, he said, he goes, you know, I never thought I was going to work again. He said, I went into a casting director's office and, um, and, and I, I sat down and I went, you know, looked at him like this. And they said, I, I can't, I'm not going to take you. Cause I've got somebody like you. And he said, do you have anybody like this? And he said, and I took my hand and I cleared their desk and I put it on the floor and he goes, do you have anybody like that? <laughs> <laughs> Spontaneous. So, and so, and everything. And so, you know, and you know, he, <laughs> You got to have that edge. Rep- yeah. He had this reputation of being kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a wild, you know, candidate. And he also said he used to like, when he was doing stand up, he liked, he liked to stir things up. He, he was, he's kind of a dotist, you know, the kind of the guys that would, the, the art movement that where they would kind of shoot guns in theaters or, you know, scream fire in theaters to see, you know, make pandemonium happen. And he said that he used to like to get into fights uh, at, at, um, at comedy, you know, at, at comedy clubs because he needed something real to happen. He said, mm-hmm. I wasn't happy unless something real was happening. So the thing that happened, you know, it just, it, it, it wasn't out of character. It, I don't, I don't think for a second that guy was racist. I, he's not, he was trying to create, he was shooting a gun off in a theater. Right. Um, he was do, he was being a dotist and, um, but he's not. And uh, you know, uh, he's, he's an amazing, uh, he did things like, you know, that when they, when they bring that, that box of the box of clothes in. Yes. It, 
he looked at it and he started, he, he looked at it. And it was like, you could see this machine going comedy, comedy, comedy. He opened it up, he started like that. And he started smelling the clothes because you knew the clothes stunk. You know, it's just like, like an old grandpa clothes and everything's like going like that. And then, you know, and just like, you know, he was, he was trying to figure things out. Look, what's funny about this one? Look, what am I gonna do with this hat? What am I gonna, you know, like that, you know, he was, he was just trying to figure things out. Uh, brilliant, working I mean, so hard. Well, only. Only Kramer can go through a grandfather's clothes, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, you, you, yeah, you touched exactly. on it. I mean, and we spoke with uh, his old girlfriend who he dated many years during the show, Ann Tallman. And, you know, mm -hmm. she's, he was, she said the same thing. He was just kind of misunderstood, but such a giving person. And, like, yeah. But again, what an actor. I mean, uh, incredible. Incredible. And, you know, he rode his bike and <laughs> he rode his bike to work. You're kidding. No. You could see him all over Studio City riding his bike. It was I'd sit there and I'd go like, "There's, there's Richard." <laughs> just drove by me on his bike. And you, you, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't know it was him. He always he rode his bike everywhere, and so he'd he'd ride his bike to rehearsal. Uh, you know, um, and yeah, people just didn't. Of course, they didn't know it was crazy. But so, yeah, he was, right. so back back to that yeah that classic scene between you and him. Like, how was yeah. I know you have the script there, but like, how was that written? Just hey. Kramer comes in and does his thing or like, was it actually written specifically what was going to happen? Or you guys kind of just worked on that. I, 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 I'm sure it was written. I'm sure it was written. Uh, they, they the, the, the script um, supervisor was, uh, was really specific about everything you did. There was no imp improvisation on the show. It was, uh, I'm sure that Jerry and Jerry, those guys could probably do it, but a guest right. star was not allowed to. So you, you did, you had to get the prepositions, right? Somebody, you know, if, if I said, I got this, I got this at a, at a pawn shop, uh, she would come up and she would, I would say, I got it in a pawn shop. She would say, it's at a pawn shop. And I go, <laughs> yeah. so you didn't there was no improv i mean you know we 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 worked it out we did it the first time they just said well we're not going to do that again that's good to keep it that, keep it exactly that way so and i think that was actually we did that after lunch and he goes i'm going to turn you around and throw you against the wall uh and everything and those things about you know me coming away like oh uh, oh no yeah yeah i'm ray yeah oh that's you know like <laughs> Like, oh yeah, this is gonna be fine. And then he's like, no, get back on the wall, pervert. <laughs> you know? on the wall, pervert. Yeah. I'm a cop. I'm a damn good cop. Yeah, yeah. So many great lines in that scene. So you're telling me dip the dip uh, dip the bread in the batter and put it in the pan was was scripted that way. Absolutely. I, I, <laughs> love that. Absolutely. Line. I always love yeah. that line. It is, yeah. It yeah, N not none of it was improvised. Yeah. I've, I've been on shows that were, that were largely improvised. I mean, Friday night lights was mostly improvised, but, uh, you know, it, oh, wow. uh, it uh, but no, no. Very yeah. cool. Who were you on Friday? I'm trying to think Friday lights. Who the abortion Friday doctor, Friday? the abortion doctor. <laughs> With who, Minka Kelly or the other one? Uh, I just remember it was, uh, redhead. Um, what was, uh, uh, oh, she was in Dune. She was a child in Dune. I can't remember her name. Uh, she was the mother. The daughter was pregnant, and they were they were having to get. A, and I had to learn all about Texas abortion law because say, I had to say it. Yeah. So you you're yeah. uh, Austin's <laughs> blowing up right now, right? You got uh, Musk ridiculous. moving out there. Joe Rogan set up shop. It's uh, yeah. boom and comedy scene and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of uh, really hitting the map now. It is. Uh, you know, we 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 need to get we need to get our incentives back so we can get some more production here but yeah no it's uh, it's really it's it, it's a good film town richard's here rodriguez is here um oh, yeah. the kind of fringe guys are really kind of you know keeping keeping the dream going the old austin dream so have you ever gotten the itch um you know just knowing your relationship kind of with the seinfeld hierarchy if you will uh getting on curb your enthusiasm or anything like that you ever get the itch to get uh <laughs> That would, back fun, that, crew. that would be fun that would be fun you know it just those guys were just great they were just so great it, you know i figured they they could figure out how to get a hold of me if they wanted to <laughs> <laughs> we would have loved hold of them. i actually saw jerry once in a in a uh in, in on sunset uh i was with melinda I was with melinda who mcgraw who, who yeah. Was, uh, melinda mcgraw yeah melinda mcgraw uh she and i were having lunch at uh cafe man on sunset in sunset plaza and some guy's looking at me and he's got these big glasses on and everything and he's doing this he's going that and I'm like going, who's he looking at? Who is that guy? And, I think, and I, then I looked at his lips and I went, I said, Jerry standing right there. <laughs> <laughs> so he recognized me before I recognized him. 
Wow, it's crazy. I mean, so many guest stars have told us they've run into Jerry years later, and he's always been uh, courteous to them. Right. Remember, um, it was a Michael Christopher Lawrence told us a great story. Remember that? I mean, it's just, yeah. it just sounds like he, uh, you know, he likes to. He's he a nice guy. Up, you know? Yeah. yeah. He's a nice guy. I mean, he suffers no fools. I can see that later on. I mean, you know, he, he doesn't need to at this point. Right. But, uh, you know, I mean, at the, he was just so, he was just such a kind you know amazing they were all great they were all great and you know who i can't believe i i just watched this episode like i said i, I didn't want to come off stupid so I, I i watched it and uh and uh i cannot believe how incredibly amazing julia is at creating these high stakes on things that don't matter and you know that's one of the comedy it's one of the things that you to do to make something funny it's like everything that she said was really important and none of it was ever sounded insincere you know everything is you know when she's like stabbing that that ice cream with a spoon and she's like eating it and she's like going <laughs> yeah my boss loves robin worse he loves ray and he doesn't think you're funny at all i just like <sighs> little line that just is like are you kidding that's hilarious she yeah, just turns yeah, everything I mean, I mean it's been 30 years and we're still laughing about it i mean yeah. it's it's just an iconic show and you were a, a huge part of it so we just want to we just want to thank you for the laughs and uh, you know thanks for thanks for hanging out with us for a few minutes. Know, this was, this was yeah, I'm so thanks. happy to talk to you, man. Yeah, now you guys, you guys know you guys know this even more than I do. I tell you that that's for sure. <laughs> so glad yeah. you have the statue, man. That made my yeah. night. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? It's like, yeah, did he steal it? I don't know. I got this. You know, <laughs> I've been wrongfully accused all these years. You know. <laughs> thank awesome. you so much, well, Michael. You see, Good you luck to, with you, everything, you say, man. Say hello for us. If I see Pat, I will give you, I will give yeah. him your regards, you guys. Great job awesome. you guys are doing. Oh, Melman. Yeah, Melman. That's what a great guy he is, too. He, oh, I yeah. He, socially, yeah. <laughs> he put us on the map a little bit. He, he was just kind enough to come on early on with us. We were dev- grateful, for sure. Yeah. All right, Mike. That's great. Thank you so much, man. Thanks, you guys. This was awesome. Thanks, Michael. Thank Best you. of Have luck. a great night. See you later. All right.